Welcome to an English language lesson class. I am Madam Gan. Today, this English language class is for Form 5. We are using the textbook download. The tip is Health and Environment. It is Unit 5. The topic is the environment. Let's look at the learning standards. We have the main skills, reading 3.2.1, read a variety of suitable print and digital text to investigate and analyze global issues, and also listening 1.1.1, understand independently the main ideas in extended text on a wide range of familiar topics and some unfamiliar topics. The complementary skills, reading 3.1.3, Guess the meaning of unfamiliar words from clues provided by other words and by context on a wide range of familiar topics and some unfamiliar topics. Then we are speaking 2.1.1. Explain information on familiar topics from diagram, charts, tables, graph and other visuals. Dear students, Let's begin today's lesson by doing this quiz. So this is the environment quiz. And the first question, how many people die each day due to dirty, tinkering water? Number two, how many kilos of rubbish are dumped into the ocean every year? Number three, which is the cleanest place on earth? Number four, which country produces the most oil in the world? And number five, which is the most air polluted country in the world. So what are your answers? For number one, how many people die each day due to dirty drinking water? The answer is 5,000. Number two, how many kilos of rubbish are dumped into the ocean every year? The answer is 6,300,000 kilogram. Number three, which is the cleanest place on earth? Answer is Antarctica. Number four, which country produces the most oil in the world? Answer is Russia. Which is the most air polluted country in the world? So answer is Mongolia. Next, number two, what causes air pollution? Complete the table with your own ideas. So the first one, air pollution, the causes are car exhaust fumes, factory fumes, aerosol sprays, water pollution, they are sewage, plastic and oil spills, and soil pollution, you have pesticides, fertilizers, landfills. For noise pollution, you have the causes are traffic, car alarms, roadworks and also building constructions. Let's look at the pictures for the sources of pollution. So here you have car exhaust fumes for air pollution and you have factory fumes and also aerosol sprays. And next sewage and then you have plastic and oil spills. So these are the causes of water pollution. Next you have pesticides, fertilizers, landfills and landfills. So this is for land or soil pollution. And then you have traffic, you have car alarms, roadworks, and building construction for noise pollution. Next, watch this short video about the problems of plastic by ocean heroes. Why does Ann Cummings think that we are eating our own rubbish?
Let's look at the answer for the question. Why does Anne Cummings think that we are eating our own rubbish? So the answer is, she thinks we are eating our own rubbish because chemicals in the water stick to plastic and get into the food chain. So the chemicals get into fish that we then eat. Now let's look at our first activity for reading lesson. Look at the list of environmental problems. Which one are the most serious in your area or your own country? So you have acid rain, drought, oil spills at sea, destructions of forests, endangered species, polluted beaches, drinking water quality, floods, nuclear accidents and smog. Then choose one of the problems from one and explain to a partner how it affects you, us, okay, and also the planet we live on. So I'm going to choose floods. So let's look at the effects. So answer, people can be injured or killed by flooding. Flood water is often contaminated with sewage which can lead to illness and affect clean drinking water. Power supplies can be disrupted. Businesses can be forced to shut down. Services such as hospitals and school can close. Transport networks can be affected, such as flood damage to bridges, railways and roads. Homes and properties can be flood flooded. Crops are destroyed. Farm animals die, or you can say livestock die. People may have to move out of their properties until flood damage is repaired. Possessions can be damaged and washed away. Now let's look at the pictures so that you can understand the environmental problems better. So the first one is a picture for drinking water quality. Second is for oil spill. Third one is for nuclear plants accident. Third, a fourth one is for forest destruction. And then the next one, floods, followed by drought, endangered species, smog. Smog is a kind of air pollution originally named for the mixture of smoke and fog in the air. Then you have acid rain. And the last one is polluted beaches. Now read the text carefully. What do the people involved in the environmental projects all have in common? So you are going to read and also listen to the passage Teens Saving the Environment. Read about these amazing teenagers and their incredible ideas. Unit 5. Reading Teens Saving the Environment Read about these amazing teenagers and their incredible ideas. A. 16-year-old Nadav Ossendriver is the creator of Kruger Sightings, a website that follows wildlife such as lions, rhinos, elephants, giraffes and leopards in Kruger National Park in South Africa. The website started as a blog where Nadav wrote about the best places to see the animals. Nadav now collects information provided by visitors to Kruger National Park who use their mobile phones to send updates to Kruger sightings when they see one of the park's many animals. This lets other visitors find the animals more easily. The site also does its best to protect rhinos from people who want to kill them for their valuable horns, which is a growing problem at the park. It provides visitors with contact numbers to report such incidents. B. Plastic is useful because it is strong and it lasts a long time. Unfortunately, those qualities also make plastic a disaster for the environment because it takes 1,000 years for this man-made material to break down. With 500 billion plastic bags being made every year and the Great Pacific Garbage Patch growing bigger by the day, we clearly need a way to make the plastic break down faster. In 2009, 
That's exactly what 16-year-old student Daniel Bird did. He identified two types of bacteria that work together to decompose plastic. He experimented with the bacteria at different temperatures and managed to break down 43% of the plastic in only six weeks, a major scientific breakthrough. C. In 2010, the US produced 2.4 million tons of e-waste, with a huge amount of that being mobile phones. Jason Lin, a 15-year-old high school student, learnt about this problem at school and set up a business to reduce e-waste by keeping old gadgets out of landfills. He and his friends run an e-waste recycling business from their website iretron.com. People sell their old gadgets to Lin. He and his team then fix them and resell them online. Although there are good e-cyclers like Lin, some just ship the waste to other countries. There it becomes an environmental and health risk, creating deadly conditions wherever it is dumped. With iRetron, consumers make money on their gadget, iRetron makes a profit, and electronics don't end up in a landfill. D. 19-year-old Alec Lures is the founder of Kids vs. Global Warming and the organiser of the I Matter March. In 2011, he took the US to court for not doing enough to protect the atmosphere for future generations. According to Alec, when we began burning fossil fuels last century, we didn't know the terrible consequences. Now, however, we do, so there is no excuse for continuing the destruction. He believes that future generations have a right to inherit a clean planet and that the government has a responsibility to protect that future for our children and to recognise that the future matters. If you agree with Alec, you can join an I Matter march and let the government know what you think. Dear pupils, for the multiple matching tasks, underline the keywords in each question and then look for similar words or ideas in the different sections. For example, in question one, the keywords are you have your internet and also cleaner. Also, to avoid careless mistakes, read each section again, even if you think you have found the answer. So now read the text again to find the following information. Which paragraph mentions using the internet to keep the planet cleaner? So answer is paragraph C. Number two talks about mistakes made in the past. So D describes a place where nature can be appreciated. A mentions a project that makes money. So this is paragraph C. Explain where some household rubbish ends up. So B. Describes an animal that is in danger. Answer is A. Suggest a way to express your views about something. So answer is D. Explain an important discovery. So B. Mentions using lawyers to solve a problem. Answer is D. Describes how to reuse useful rubbish. So the last one is paragraph C. Now for exercise 5, complete each sentence with two of these words. So you have fossil fuels, incidents, landfills, march, waste and wildlife. So number 1, last Sunday, thousands of people attended the march to, protect, to protest about whaling. They were peaceful and the police reported no violent incidents. Number 2, burning. Fossil fuels such as coal and oil to produce energy causes air pollution. This in turn causes climate change which is harmful to humans and wildlife. Understandably, the residents are very concerned about the government's plans to create a landfill in the area. 
no one wants huge amounts of waste on their doorstep. So now work with a partner, create your own environmental organization. You can give it a name and also draw a logo. What sort of environmental issues will your group deal with? Now let's move on to vocabulary. Circle the correct words. So let's look at the first picture. The answer is earthquake, number two, flood, number three, wildfire, number four, tornado, number five, volcanic eruption, number six will be tsunami, number seven, famine, and number eight, drought. Number uh, Exercise two. The words and phrases below are related to disasters in one. Complete them by writing a vowel. So, vowels are A, E, I, O, U. So, you have to uh, write the vowels for each of the words. So, there are eight words here. Number one is lack of water. Number two, burning lava. Number three, giant wave. Number four, crops destroyed by water. Number five, we have high winds. Number six is starvation. Number seven, after shocks. And number eight is deforestation. Now for exercise three, match the words and the phrases in two with disasters in exercise one. So first we have earthquake. So the answer will be after shocks. Next we have flood. So answer is crops destroyed. Uh, number three, we have wildfire, so deforestation. We have tornado, so the answer will be high winds. And then we have number five, volcanic eruption. We have burning lava. And then we have tsunami, giant wave. Famine will be starvation. And drought will be lack of water. Next is exercise four. Complete the sentences with these words. So you have endangered species, global warming, eco-friendly products, eco-tourists, alternative energy resources, conservation, cleanup, and green belt. So number one, when you go shopping, you should buy eco-friendly products like energy saving lights, light bulbs, because they are kinder to the environment. Number two, the cleanup of oil spill took months and cost a huge amount of money. Number two, a or n, so answer is n eco tourists would never travel to a place if they thought their visit might harm the environment. Number four, wind, sun and water power are all alternative energy sources we could use instead of fossil fuels. Number five, there is a or an. So answer is a, there is a green belt around my city. No one is allowed to build in the forest there. Number six, Bill believes it's important to protect animals and their habitats. So he works in conservation. Number seven, we need to help endangered species like elephants and rhinos before they all disappear. And the last sentence, number eight, global warming where gases heat up the planet is one of the causes of climate change. Now let's look at the word formation. First is complete the table. So you have two columns here, verb and noun. So for staff, staff is a word, verb. So the noun is starvation. Second, you have the noun, destruction. So what is the verb? The verb is destroy. And then the third, you have the verb contaminate. So the noun is contamination. And the fourth, you have conservation. So the verb is conserve. Noun number five is interference. And then the verb is interfere. And last, we have the verb refer. So the noun is reference. 
Now for exercise 2, complete the sentences with one of the words in exercise 1. Sadly, the politician made no reference to our suggestions to save endangered species in his speech today. Number 2. If companies contaminate lakes or rivers, they should have to pay for the cleanup. Number 3. We told the factory owner he was harming the environment and he said he didn't appreciate our interference in his business. Number 4. Some people in the world have very little food. If we don't do something soon, they will starve. Number 5. The tsunami caused the destruction of buildings and killed many people. Number 6. It's not dark. Turn out the light. We should conserve energy when we can. For number 3, we are going to do preposition. So there are two prepositions here, about or for. So complete the sentences with about or for. Number 1. Have you heard about the teenager in South Africa who created a website to help wild animals. Number two, people should be punished for throwing litter out of car windows. Number three, who's to blame for all the e-waste in the world? Number four, we are meeting outside the factory today to protest about what they are doing to the local lake. Number five, didn't anybody warn you about swimming in that river, it's polluted. Number six, I long for the days when there was no water or air pollution. Number three, how can anyone boast about killing a lion or a tiger? Number eight, my son wants to apologize for starting the wildfire. Next, we have phrasal verbs. So circle the correct words to complete the sentences. I told you to keep away or keep on from that old factory is dangerous. So the answer is keep away. Number two, if we cut off or cut down the trees in the rainforest, where will all the animals live? So answer is cut down. Number three, they went for a walk in the national park and ended up or used up getting lost. Answer is ended up. Number four, there are laws about burning down or knocking down forests. So answer will be burning down. Number five, quick, get some water so I can put off or put out this fire. So answer will be put out. Number six, everyone really threw themselves away or threw themselves into the beach cleanup on Sunday. So answer is through themselves into. Next we have, the next question is, match the phrasal verbs you didn't use in exercise 4 with the meanings below and then write a sentence using each one in your notebook. So number one, cut off. So cut off is to stop the supply of something like water or electricity. Number two, Knock down. Knock down is destroy something by making it fall to the ground. Next, we have throw something away. So it is to get rid of something or put something into the rubbish. Number four, keep on. So continue to do something. Put off is to delay doing something. Used up is finish a supply of something. Now let's look at the next lesson. This is grammar. So today, the grammar items are future simple, shall, be going to and future continuous. So read about the uses of the future simple, shall, be going to and the future continuous. So for future simple, it is used for decision made at the time of speaking. Example, those people are very hungry. I'll give them some food. Next, it is also used for predictions with no evidence. Lots of people will join our conservation group. So this is for prediction with no evidence. So number three, 
future tense, a uh, future simple is also used after verbs like think, believe, be sure, expect, and others, and with the adverbs like probably, maybe, and others. Example, I think there will be another earthquake in the area soon. Next, future simple is also used to talk about future facts. For example, they will plant their crops in June. Next, it is used for promises, threats, warnings, offers, and requests. She'll start buying eco-friendly products, she promised. Stop having fires in the forest, otherwise I'll call the police. I'll help you start a conservation group at school. Will you pick up all your rubbish when we finish, please? Next, look at shell. We use shell with I and we to ask for advice or when we want to make a suggestion or an offer. These are the sentences. Which animal shall we do our project on? Shall we go on an eco-friendly holiday this year? Shall I show you where the wildfire started? Next, we're going to future plans and intentions as well as things we expect to happen in the near future because of something in the present. So th this is be going to. Kevin says he's going to become a park ranger. Look at all these machines. They are going to build something in this green belt. Next, future continuous. Actions that will be in progress at a specific time in the future, as well as future plans and arrangements. We'll be learning about man-made disasters this time tomorrow morning. This time next summer, Nia will be traveling around the African continent. Now read the sentences. Which one of the expressions is a suggestion? Which one asks about a future plan or intention? A. Shall we help with the cleanup in the park on Saturday? So this is suggestion. Are we going to help with the cleanup in the park on Saturday? So this is future plan or intention. Uh, remember to read 5.1 to 5.4 of the grammar reference in your textbook. Let's continue with the grammar lesson. So here we are learning about, remember that future simple. So this is 5.1. This is from your textbook. So we have four types of sentences. We have affirmative, which is a positive, negative, question and short answers. So for future simple, the affirmative, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, will, sell. So for negative, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, will not sell. So this is the negative sentence. And then we have the question, will I, you, he, she, it, we, they, sell? And then we have the short answers, yes. I, you, he, she, it, we, they, will. No, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, won't or will not. We use the future simple for decisions made at the time of speaking. For example, look at all this rubbish. I'll pick it up. And then we use the future simple for predictions with no evidence. Everyone will buy eco-friendly products. We also use future simple for after verbs like think, believe, be sure, expect and others and with adverbs like probably, maybe and others. Example, Jen is sure the conservation project will be a success. And we also use future simple to talk about future facts. Example, the shelter will open next spring. And then we also use future simple for promises, threats and warnings. I promise I'll recycle more in future. So this is a promise. Don't dump 
your rubbish here. I'll report you. So this is a warning. You get into trouble if you leave your rubbish here. Okay. So this is also a reminder. Next, the last one is future tense is used for offers and also requests. I'll come to the beach and help with the cleanup. Will you tell your friends to buy eco-friendly products, please? Next, 5.2 is Shell. We use Shell with I and we to ask for advice or when we want to make a suggestion or an offer. What shall we do to help the survivors of the tsunami? Shall we donate money to the victims of the famine? Shall I help you sort out the recycling? For 5.3, the grammar item is be going to. So we have the affirmative, I am going to sell. You, we, they are going to sell. He, she, it is going to sell. So the negative, I am not going to sell. You, they, we are not going to sell. He, she, it is not going to sell. Then the question, am I going to sell? Are you, they, we going to sell? Is he, she, it going to sell? And then we have the answers. Yes, I am. No, I don't. I am not. Then for uh, you, we and they, yes. You, we, they are. No, you, we, they aren't or are not. Okay, next for he, she, it, yes. He, she, it is. No, he, she, it isn't or is not. We use be going to. So this is the grammar item for first future plans and inter intentions. Okay, Lynn's going to go on an eco-friendly holiday next year. So this is the her intention of future plan. Okay, we also use be going to for things we expect to happen in the near future because of something in the present. We have had no rain for weeks. There is going to be a drought. Let's look at the time expression. This week, month, summer, tonight, this evening, tomorrow, Tomorrow morning, afternoon, night, next week, month, year, at the weekend, in January, in a few minutes, in a few hours, days, on Thursday, on Wednesday, uh, on Wednesday morning, and others. For the next grammar item, which is 5.4, future continuous. So future continuous, the spelling is we add the ing. For example, drive, driving, win, winning, study, studying. Okay, let's look at the positive or the affirmative sentence. You, I, you, he, she, it, we, they will be selling. Negative, I, you, he, she, it, we, they will not be selling. Question, will I, you, he, she, it, we, they be selling? We have the short answers. Yes, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, will. No, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, won't. We use the future continuous for actions that will be in progress at a specific time in the future. So this is future continuous. Example, we'll be visiting the wind farm this time next week. And we also use future continuous for future plans and arrangements. This time tomorrow night, John will be flying to America. So remember that we do not use stative words in continuous tenses. Time expression, this time next week, this time next month, this time next summer, this time tomorrow morning, or this time tomorrow afternoon or night and others. Remember, we can use the present simple for timetables and programmed events and the present continuous for future plans and arrangements. Example, the protest march begins at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. So this is begins is present simple. Uh, next a sentence, I am joining a conservation group tonight. And this is for present continuous. 
Let's look at the first exercise. Circle the correct words. Help from above. What? Shall we or will be will we be doing? So answer will be what shall we do about one of the planet's biggest environmental problems? Here's a possible solution. Drones. These aircraft that have no pilots are traditionally used in military situations that the government expects will be or shall be so will be too dangerous for pilots flying normal planes now however drones have got a new use they are helping in the fight to save the planet's endangered species some african conservation parks are already using these aircraft and before too long many more conservationists shall be using or will be using so we'll be using them too. This is because drones can go anywhere and film anything or anybody, even poachers, people who hunt illegally. In addition, drones are getting cheaper to make and to buy. This seems to indicate that their price is going to continue or will be continuing to decrease. The answer will be is going to continue to decrease as time goes on. Drones have proved to be very efficient in the war against poachers in Africa. So, there is little doubt that their role in conservation will be growing or is going to grow. Is going to grow. It's likely that they will become or are becoming, will become even more important in the near future. In the past, park rangers dealt with poachers and they did what they could. But in a few years' time, drones, those all seeing eyes in the sky, will probably replace or will be probably replacing. So answer will be will probably replace at least some of these people. Now let's look at the second grammar. Part. So here we have future perfect simple, future perfect continuous and temporals. So read about the future perfect simple and the future perfect continuous and temporals. Let's look at the first one, future perfect simple. We use the future perfect simple for two situations here. For something that will be finished by or before a specific time in the future, they will have opened the new conservation area by July. So this is something that will finish in future. Number two, to show the length of time that an action will have lasted for at a point of time in the future. I'll have been a manager at the recycling center for two years next week. Next, we look at a future perfect continuous. We use the future perfect continuous to talk about Something that will continue up to a specific time in the future. Carol will have been protesting outside the factory for two days on Sunday. So, this is fu uh, future perfect continuous. Next, we look at temporals. When we use temporals such as when, before, after, until, once, by the time, and others to talk about the future, we use them with a perfect tense. We do not use them with a future tense. After he buys or after he has bought the new trees, he'll plant them in the garden. Okay, so we use them with the present tense. Example, buys or has bought. Next, we use temporal. Uh, we use a present perfect tense to emphasize that the first action will be finished before the other one starts. We can go to the zoo when you have eaten your breakfast. We will start the meeting once everyone has arrived. Number two, read the sentences. Which tenses do they use? Which one could be rewritten using a temporal? Which sentence uh, tenses will you need to use the, then? 
aka I arrived in Africa and then I'll email my parents. So this is future simple because I'll arrive then I'll email. Okay, next. I'll have been living in Africa for two months on Monday. So this is future perfect tense because of the what I'll have been. Okay. Then remember to read 5.5 to 5.7 of the grammar reference in your textbook. So let's look at the last question. Which uh, tenses would you need to use then? So sentence A, written using a temporal. So when you use a temporal, I'll email my parents once or as soon as or after I arrive or after I have arrived in Africa. So this is using a temporal. Then use future simple and present simple or present perfect simple. So let's look at 5.5. So this is future perfect simple. So we have four types of sentences. We have the affirmative or positive, a negative, question and also short answers. So let's look at the affirmative. Before that spelling, for future perfect, so it's perfect uh, tense. So we use lift is lift, travel is traveled, cry, cried, enjoy, enjoyed. So the affirmative, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, will, have, so. So weird is the future, perfect is have. So we will, uh, the phrase is will, have, so. I, you, he, she, it, we, they, will not have so. So this is the negative. And then the question, will I, you, he, she, it, we, they, have so? And the answers, yes. I, you, he, she, it, we, they, will. No. I, you, he, she, it, we, they, won't. We use a future perfect simple to talk about something that will be finished by or before a specific time in the future. Will we have destroyed our planet by 2100? The length of time that an action will have lasted for at a point of time in the future. So this is how you use future perfect tense. Wendy will have worked as a park ranger for 30 years next year. Now 5.6 future perfect continuous. So the spelling drive will be driving, win is winning, study is studying. So let's look at the four sentences. Affirmative, I, you, he, she, it, we, they will have been selling. So selling here is the continuous. Have been is the will have been will be the future perfect. Okay, negative. I, you, he, she, it, we, they will not have been selling. Question. Will I, you, he, she, it, we, they have been selling? Short answers. Yes. I, you, he, she, it, we, they will. No. I, you, he, she, it, we, they won't. We use a future perfect continuous to talk about something that will continue up to a specific time in the future. Liam will have been living in the green belt for 10 years in December. Remember that we do not use dative verbs, verbs in continuous tenses. Time expression by the end of this week, by the end of this month, by the end of this year, by this time tomorrow, by tomorrow morning, by 10 o'clock, by 2012, and others. Uh, 5.7, so we are looking at temporals. When we use temporals, such as when, before, after, until, once, by the time, and others, to talk about the future, we use them with the present or a present perfect tense. We do not use them with the future tense. When he saves or when he has saved enough money, he'll travel the world. We use a present perfect tense to emphasize that the first action will be finished 
before the other one starts. We will start cleaning up. When the storm has passed, we'll, have, we'll wait for the storm to pass first and then we'll start cleaning up. Let's look at the first exercise. Complete the sentences. Use the future perfect simple or the future perfect continuous. By the end of this century, the planet become more polluted. So the planet will have become more polluted. Number two, by the end of this century, we cut down trees in the rainforest for more than two centuries. So the answer is, we will have been cutting down. Number three, by the end of this century, they probably not find a solution to the problems created by climate change. So they probably won't have found. Okay, the next one, number four, by the end of this century, scientists discover more efficient alternative energy sources. So we'll have discovered. Number five, by the end of this century, experts invent new ways to clean up oil spills. We'll have invented. By the end of this century, we built cities for many years. We will have been building cities for many years. Seven, by the end of this century, people realize that they must find a way to feed the poor in Africa. So, will people have realized? Okay, number eight. By the end of this century, conservationists discuss how to help endangered species for a long time. So, answer will be, will have been discussing. Now for exercise four. Circle the correct temporal and complete the sentences with the verbs in records. Use the present simple, the present perfect simple, or the future simple. The first one, we'll live before or we'll live as soon as we put out the campfire. So answer is, we'll live as soon as we have put out or we put out the campfire. Once before she, so answer will be, once she reads or has read my letter, she'll know she has to do something about the rubbish in her garden. Number three, you can visit me when or by the time. So, when I get home from the protest meeting. Number four, we go to the game reserve. We will go to the game reserve before or after. So, after it has stopped raining. Number five, I won't swim in the lake by the time or until. So until they close or they have closed that factory. They not prevent, they won't prevent illegal hunting until they make better laws. So the next seven, the roof of our house was damaged by the tornado. We can't go back home by the time or until. So until that. Fix, so it fixes or has fixed it. The last one, the moment or before. So the moment I see an elephant, take I will take its photograph. Dear students, we have reached the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching this video. And then do remember to subscribe to my channel. It is called Educator Omni Tube. I'm Madam Gan. So see you in another lesson for English language. Bye-bye.